Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions. And like many of you guys know, I'm huge when it comes down to technical analysis. One of the things that I want to point out before I go ahead and get started is that technicals tend to take over when fundamentals are no longer in place. Fundamentals are always the most important part. And if there's any news or any factor, any form of catalyst that is, you know, a scent to the market, uh, that will all Altogether, there's no question, take over technicals. I, when it comes down to all these different indicators that I'm gonna be talking about, again, indicators are to be used as a reference, never to be as a sole decision maker on when you choose to buy and when you choose to sell. With that being said, you guys know that I'm all about getting in for a good deal and to sell something when it's no longer a good deal. With that simple understanding, I'm going to share my opinion. And at the end of the day, it's just that. We've been getting a lot of questions about how the market's been recovering for the past two to three days and what I think about it. In this video, I'm going to share my opinion on the technical aspect on why I think that the market is bound to pull back based off of, um, yeah, let me just go ahead and based off of current conditions. And uh, I'm gonna start sharing my screen just so you guys can see exactly what it is uh, that I'm looking at. So this is forward slash ES, which is the S&P 500 future. And this is forward slash NQ. This is the one that I personally like to focus on most. And what I want to talk about is this time frame that I have going on right here is the 180 day four hour time frame. If you're gonna ask what platform I'm using, you can see on the top left hand corner that it's the Thinkorswim platform by TD Ameritrade. It's the platform that I use and it is not the platform that you have to use. One of the things, I'm gonna keep this video super simple. I think that I can, that many of you guys can agree with me that you know we're, we're deal hunters, right? We wanna buy something for a good deal to then later sell it for a profit. With that simple understanding, I'm not here to, to argue or to say that I'm right and you're wrong. I'm just here to share my opinion and to back it up with why I came up with that idea. And what I wanna point out is the SMA line based off of previous patterns, previous patterns tend to repeat themselves, they don't have to. The SMA line, which is this green line that you see right here, tends to act as a support when the overall pattern is above the SMA line. So as it pulls back, it bounces here. As it pulls back, it stays above the SMA line. But like we saw around April to May, right? It began to pull back and it broke the pattern. This is when we began to see the market to pull back. It tried to push up and then get, guess what happened? The old support level, the SMA line, then began to act as a resistance. It got rejected, look at the RSI, look at the MACD, and then it made lower lows and lower highs. It then approach the SMA line again. There's multiple reasons on why it began to recover and then it broke above the SMA line and then overall reinstating the overall SMA line to act as a support again. What we recently began to see is it then broke back below the SMA line. There's a lot of consolidation, but it's been getting rejected multiple times, once, twice, and possibly a third time. This is the only reason that I am making this video is if you have money in stocks that are influenced by the NASDAQ, by the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, right? Then you might want to simply do your own due diligence and ask yourself, does it make sense that it's possible for this thing to get rejected and begin to trade below the EMA line and begin to sell off? Based off of recent patterns, it's very easy to identify the low points, the high points, the low points, the high points, the low points, and the high points. So all I'm pointing out is that right now, based off of recent patterns, patterns tend to repeat themselves, they don't have to. So based off of recent patterns, NASDAQ looks a little bit more on the overbought side, which means no longer a good deal than more on the oversold side. So all I'm here to remind you is if there's any reason on why you think that you should lock in profits to simply do so. If there's any uncertainty, then lock in profits. I think that we can both agree that, you know, the best way, in my opinion, to feel comfortable with what it is that you are trading is when you have a clear understanding of the direction that something is heading. And I think that majority of people can at least agree that we've been consolidating around this general support resistance area, right, for forward slash NQ. So I do agree. If there is certain news that is released that is a positive catalyst for the overall market, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P 500, it will drive the price up for forward slash NQ. 
Great. But as of right now, as long as there is no news, no fundamentals on why, NASDAQ will continue to push up. Technicals then will take over and then we'll most likely see it get rejected based off of previous patterns. And why is this important? How can you still make money, right? First of all, at the end of the day, if you do not understand the correlation between futures and ETFs, uh, then simply, you know, ignore this. But as you guys can see, forward slash NQ has been pushing up. When forward slash NQ pushes up, TQQs pushes up as well. The inverse ETF is SQQs. So what that means is SQQs as of right now is at a potential support if and only if forward slash NQ begins to get rejected. So if we see the overall market begin to pull back, that means that gold will most likely begin to push back up. And that means that most likely SQs will, be, uh, will begin to pick back up as well. And that's all I'm here to share. Just to remind you guys that there's nothing wrong with being safe. And I think that we can all agree that if I can make a simple 10 minute video reminding you to have a super clear understanding of the direction and the way that something is heading, I'm not here to tell you that you are wrong. I'm not here to tell you that you are right. I'm here to simply share my opinion on where I think that the overall market is right now. So is the market going to crash at the end of the day? No one truly knows. But all I know is based off of that simple technical analysis that each and every single one of you can perform, I find based off of current patterns that NASDAQ, S&P 500, and the Dow Jones is more overextended, so not a good deal, than it is overbought, oversold. So because of that, it would make sense to me to lock in profits until the direction is super clear. So if we begin to see signs of an uptrend, and then if we begin to see signs that the market begins to push above the SMA line, then guess what? You can simply get back in. But to play it safe, there's nothing wrong with closing a position and then just waiting, giving something time for the direction to be a little bit more clear. Um, I really hope that I don't rub anyone wrong um, in the wrong way when it comes down to this information that I'm sharing. Um, I want you guys to know that at the very end of the day, this is simply my opinion. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking me what I think about the current market condition, and I simply wanted to share that. So uh, at the end of the day, please be sure to do your own due diligence. And if you have a argument, a counter argument, or you agree with me, um, feel free to share it down in the comment section. I really like, at the end of the day, like I know that I am not right 100% of the time. Uh, as you guys can tell, if you guys can hear my voice is a little bit raspy, um, I did not take a position today. Uh, today I did not feel very well. Today was a crude oil report. We had an amazing live stream within the Learn Plan Profit lesson library um, and within the Learn Plan Profit team. And it went well. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of a very unclear direction. I think a lot of people can agree that the market has been very choppy. And because of that, I'm not feeling good. Um, my head kind of hurts, but I've been keeping them up to date with what I think is overbought and what I think is oversold. And we've been doing a pretty good job just staying up to date with overall market conditions. So that's all I'm here to share. Um, if you guys, I wanted to reach out to you guys. If I could answer any questions about the market and how it's doing, if you're someone that's just getting started, it's absolutely for free. If you've ever wanted to join a free Discord chat, it's the first link below. It's our TechBud Solutions Discord chat. It's the first link below. Feel free to refresh your page if you don't see it. You will have to download an application if you don't have, I think you have to download it, uh, but pretty much what it's gonna look like, it's gonna look like this. Uh, we're gonna bing you on over to the uh, TechBud Solutions Discord, and then all you really have to do is, you know, anytime that you wanna message me, is you can right click my name, and then click message, and then you'll be able to send me a direct message uh, asking me any questions that you might have that's just one-on-one -on -one and of course confidential so i really do appreciate you guys time all the links are down below if you guys would like to stay connected uh, tomorrow is one of my favorite days to day trade in the stock market and that is because of the natural gas report so if you want to see what it's like to watch me trade live every single day uh, i believe it's third or fourth link down below it says watch me trade live every day and it's the learn plan profit group it is the only group that i work with on a closer basis. It's the option that I offer. It's not the only option out there. So I appreciate you guys' time. I really hope that I earned your thumbs up and I wish you guys an amazing rest of your day. Take it easy team.